Hi there, happy hump day and welcome to Wednesday. There's a fabulous Aesop's fable, which is about an ass and his driver. And the story goes along the lines that the ass is being driven down the mountain by the driver. And then he takes it into his silly little head to go over and go his own way. He's only saved by misfortune because the driver who in this context is considered wiser, holds him back. The moral of the story is that at times when we're stubborn, refusing to see wisdom, refusing to see reason or to listen to people who are wiser can cause misfortune. There's many sides to this story though, because to me, there's some unanswered questions. Perhaps the ass could see things that the so-called wiser person couldn't. Was there more than one way down the mountain? Are there times when being stubborn and going your own way is actually okay? You could have a lot of fun writing that fable from multiple perspectives. And it's a great reminder that in life, there is no one way. With careers, there is no one way what success looks like for you, what success looks like for someone else is different. But what's common is success often requires you to take a path that is different to what the people around you are expecting you to do. The author of Courage is Calling, Ryan Holiday, who also writes about stoicism and philosophy, talks about, we like to think that we can have an extraordinary life by making ordinary decisions, but it's not true. It's actually all the ordinary decisions, the safe ones, recommended by every expert, criticized by no one, that makes us incredibly vulnerable in times of chaos and crisis. You think about it, we make thousands of decisions through the course of our life. We can often make hundreds of decisions each day and it's often those big decisions that we really focus our energy on, give a lot of attention to. And yet your career, your life, where you end up, isn't just about those big decisions. It's all of the decisions that come together. We're now at the end of this week, at the end of the financial year. So it's a great time to challenge yourself, to look at the decisions that you've made up until this point, to really challenge yourself so here's some questions to consider. When you look at the question, the, the, the choices that you've made up until this point, the decisions that you've made, have they moved you forward? What are the decisions that perhaps have moved you backwards? Are you satisfied with where you are right now? Have you been playing safe? Or have you been taking some calculated risks? When you took those calculated risks, did they pay off? What did you learn about yourself through that process? And are you doing what's expected of you rather than what you want to do? You know, I often talk about the difference between what you could do and what you should do. The should is laden with expectation. The could is laden with opportunity. So as you do that reflection, you're likely to find that there might be some things that you want to do differently for the remainder of this calendar year. So I'm going to give you five things to think about. Firstly, know how to say no. Often it can be so hard to do, but I love the work of um, Paolo Coelho who says, you know, when you say yes to others, just make sure you're not saying no to yourself. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't give any consideration to why you're saying no or to how the other people are going to respond, but you really want to weigh it up because you want to give no with a consideration and with compassion to other people but also make sure you're sticking up for yourself in the process. Are you doing the right thing for yourself? Secondly, get uncomfortable. If you're feeling really comfortable all the time, you've stopped learning because when you feel uncomfortable, that's your brain lighting up and telling you that you're learning something new. So find times to deliberately get uncomfortable, sit with the discomfort, Work out what you're learning about yourself, what you're learning about others, what you're learning about the environment in which you're in. Thirdly, 
take risks. You know, we often spend hours proving why things don't work or why they won't work. So my question to you is, what would it look like if you flipped that question, looked at it from a different perspective and said to yourself, hmm, how can we make this possible? Now, asking that question doesn't mean that you throw everything out because things are going to constantly change, but they're going to stay the same in some areas too. And there's lots of predictions about how things are going to change and be totally different. And actually, we're still doing a lot of the things the same. I think one of the great examples of that is the paper book. You know, years ago, it was heralded that the paper book was gone with Kindles, with iReaders. Why would we use a paper book? And yet the paper book hasn't disappeared. And there's a great article in The Guardian last year which talks about this. And in that article, the writer Tom Waits is quoted. And he talks about how, if I want to walk out in the desert and heat up a tin of beans on a fire, I still can. And yet in movies such as Gadigal, that space age stuff is always all there is. But in the world, there's never just one way of living. So what's your specific, your purpose-centered way of living that works for you, works for the people that you love? Fourthly, get proactive. And I've talked about this before. There is research that shows correlations between proactive personality, so people who get out there and do things, have initiative, and career success. So a proactive personality is someone who seeks to change their environment, not be constrained by the forces that are around them. They seek out things that are new and that are different. Now in this research, career success is things like salaries and bonuses and promotions, career satisfaction, job satisfaction, but it also can be considered you know, and defined by what you see as successful. So being proactive is you taking control of your career, ensuring that you remain firmly in that driver's seat. You're deciding the direction. You're deciding whether you're going to take some detours. You're deciding whether you're going to go fast or go slow. It's your choice. Roles come, roles go. But what you want to do is be in that driver's seat so you know the direction in which you're heading. And lastly, reward yourself. And this isn't just about a monetary reward because it's so easy to do one thing, tick it off and go, yeah, done. And you just quickly move on. Take some time, slow yourself down, pause, notice what's around you. Notice, take time to celebrate and also to thank the people that have helped you get to where you are. So enjoy the last week of this financial year. Take care and I'll see you next week.